Hey, what's up, you amazing hackers? Hope you're all doing well and welcome to the new year. Best wishes from the entire Red Pack team to everybody with listening in, of course, and watching as well. Let's talk about cross-site scripting, shall we? I'm not going to go too deep into the technical explanations of it, but have you ever wondered why dumb cross-site scripting <coughs> isn't the same as reflected cross-site scripting? Or even what the difference between DOM and reflected cross-site scripting really is? Well, let's get into those details, shall we? Cross-site scripting, or XSS, is a type of security vulnerability that allows attackers to inject malicious code into web pages viewed by other users. When the user visits a compromised web page, the injected code executes in the user's browser and can do things like steal user data, display fake login prompts, and more. There are three main types of XSS. Reflected XSS. This is the type of XSS that occurs when an attacker injects malicious code into a web page through a URL parameter. The code is then reflected back to the user, usually in the form of an error message or search result. For example, consider a search page that displays the search result in the URL as a query parameter. An attacker could craft a URL with a malicious code as the search query, and if the search page does not properly sanitize the user input, the code will be executed when the user visits the page. I have a link in the description where you can go test this out as well in the reflected cross-site scripting section. Now when we talk about stored cross-site scripting, this type of XSS occurs when an attacker injects malicious code into a web page that is stored onto the server. Any user who views the page will then be exposed to the injected code. For example, an attacker could post a comment on a forum with malicious code, and if the forum software does not properly sanitize user input, a code will be executed whenever a user views a comment. Go check out hexpert.com slash labs slash xss xss to practice. Also a link in the description below. As for DOM-based XSS, this type of XSS occurs when an attacker manipulates the document object model or the DOM of a web page. In order to inject malicious code, the code is then executed by the user's browser. In this type of XSS, the malicious code is not actually stored on the server or transmitted in an HTTP response. Instead, it is inserted into the DOM of the page by JavaScript code that is executed by the user's browser. Go check out rxss slash dom in the description below on hexpert.com to practice. Now the difference there is that the parameter is usually passed into something like the parameter after the hash sign. That is something that isn't really processed by the browser. It is put into the DOM and that is why it isn't really stored on the server processed by the website but the DOM injects that code anyway. To prevent these types of vulnerabilities, it is important to properly sanitize user input, especially in the case of reflected and stored cross-site scripting. This means removing any potentially malicious code from the user input before it is displayed on the web page. It is also important to use content security policies to prevent the execution of malicious code. Now let's talk a little bit more about stored cross-site scripting in depth, shall we? So stored cross-site scripting is a type of security vulnerability that occurs when an attacker injects their malicious code into the web page and it is stored onto the server. Any user who views this page will then be exposed to the injected code. Stored XSS is particularly dangerous because it allows an attacker to target a large number of users with a single attack vector. Once the malicious code has been injected into the web page, it will then be executed every time the page is viewed. This means that an attacker can potentially compromise the data of every user who visits that affected page. Stored XSS attacks are often used to steal sensitive information from users, such as login credentials or financial information. They can also be used to display a fake login prompt or other types of deceptive content in order to trick users into divulging sensitive information. Now, let's talk about reflected cross-site scripting. So here's a bit of an example. The attacker is going to craft the URL with a malicious code as a query parameter and send it off to the victim. The victim is then going to click the link and the web server receives the requests, including the malicious code and the URL. The web server processes the request and generates a web page with the malicious code included in it. 
this web page is sent back to the victim's browser and the code is executed. Reflected cross-site scripting attacks are often used in phishing campaigns as they can be delivered through email or social media and can be difficult for users to detect. It is important for both web developers and users to be aware of this type of attack and to take steps to protect against it. DOM-based cross-site scripting, however, is a different type of cross-site scripting in that the malicious code is not actually stored on the server or transmitted in the HTTP response. Instead, it is inserted into the docu document object model of the page by JavaScript code that is executed by the user's browser. So here's an example of how that might work. The attacker is going to craft a URL with the malicious payload again. This time the victim is going to click that link and the server is going to receive the request including the malicious payload in the URL, not in the response. The web server processes the request and generates a web page without the malicious payload. The page is without the malicious payload. So the web page is sent back to the victim's browser and the JavaScript code on the page executes because the code manipulates the DOM to insert the malicious payload into the page. The malicious payload is then executed by the victim's browser. DOM-based cross-site scripting vulnerabilities are often more difficult to detect and prevent than other types of XSS because the malicious code is not stored on the server and is not transmitted in the response. To prevent these based vulnerabilities, it is important to ensure that all user input is properly sanitized and to use content security policies to prevent the execution of said malicious code. Thank you very much for making it to the end, my friends. I really appreciate you listening in to Uncle Red's tunes and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye and I will see you later.